If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, I'm T1 Glistener Elf, here with yet another land destruction deck. Uh, this one for standard, and this one rug colored, teamer colored. Now when I say standard land destruction, that means we're going to be paying at least four mana for our spells, right? Our land destruction spells. And that's because Wizards doesn't want to make land destruction too good because it's not fun to play against. <laughs> uh, understandably so. We're, so we're going to be paying at least four mana. Let's start off the suite with four demolishes. It is simply sorcery speed, land destruction, also hits artifacts which occasionally matters, of course. Next we have the same thing, but pretty much strictly better. Exiles Artifact or Land instead, and deals them two damage. Well, two damage to it, that permanent's controller, so them should be them. And next, now, we aren't just running red land destruction spells. We also have four Reclaiming Vines. Artifact, Enchantment, or Land. Now I've run a, or I've uh, posted a mono red version of this deck. We run green partially because Reclaiming Vines just gives us yet another land destruction spell that's also flexible. You'll notice that all of these, they don't just hit lands, they hit artifacts too. And while we're not exactly running around in Mirrodin block, there are a few artifacts that do actually matter. Structural Distortion in particular is super good, super underrated, because if you exile the Hangerback Walker that we still have for another couple months or so, uh, in standard, then they don't get their Thopter tokens. That seems pretty alright, pretty good to exile. Uh, next we have three Crumble to Dust, not as much utility in this one, and it only hits non-basic lands, but the effect when it does go off is you get to Surgical, it's Sewing Salt, you get to take out from their hand, their graveyard, and their library all cards with the same name and exile them as well. That's pretty huge, right? A lot of mana bases, even the two color mana bases, if you can cut them off of all of a given land, that could be very consequential, right? And then the ramp decks, you hit their Sanctum of Ugin or whatever, just hit a land in the ramp deck and they will not appreciate that very much. By the way, Ramp is... Oh, it should, it should just automatically lose to you in this match. Now, next we have a one of Pyromancer's Goggles. Now, so far you haven't seen as much as you'd like to get out of Pyromancer's Goggles. Four Reclaiming Vines, and Crumble to Dust is colorless, so we can't copy it with Pyromancer's Goggles. Still, part of it is just, we get to copy, demolish, and structural distortion. That seems pretty hot. It's legendary. We get diminishing returns for running more than one anyway. I think that's quite alright though, because we these aren't our only red spells. And this is the land destruction package, if we want to count goggles as an LD, since it doubles these. Fifteen land destruction spells in the main board. Crumble to Dust hits multiple lands. The others can hit artifacts, and in the case of Reclaiming Vines, enchantments as well. There's a lot of utility, there's a lot of versatility in what we're able to hit. But, of course, since we're talking CMC4 at the lowest end, all of these are CMC4, of course, we need something to do to get us to that point in the game, and one way is ramp. And to that end, we have three ramp spells in here. We run Leaf Gilder, just very simply, two mana, adds a mana. Hopefully that'll, if we hit our, all of our land drops, get us into turn three demolish, and we can just start going from there. Next we have Ulvenwald Captive. Now, I like this one not just because it's another Leaf Gilder. It does have Defender, but... And I'll, I guess I'll show this one off too while I'm at it. Uh, Curious Homunculus. This one will only tap for instance and sorceries, but of course you can use this as a win condition potentially, right? This just turns into a... a prowess makes all of you uh, goblin electromancer that's also a 3-4 right that could be pretty good it's a win condition in the deck uh, with Ulvenwald captive what we're seeing is 
Yes, it's still a mana dork if you happen to still need that, otherwise it's just a 4-6. So, one of the great things about Ulvenwald Abomination, uh, what was it, Voracious Reader? Voracious Reader, yes. Uh, is that in a normal ramp deck, a lot of the times you'll, uh, you'll ramp, you'll ramp, you'll ramp, and then where your win conditions. Sometimes you'll just draw into air, as a, a friend of mine put it. You won't find your win cons, and so you'll just keep finding lands, keep finding ramp spells. Obviously they have ways to get out of that. Sanctum of Ugin helps them out tremendously, for instance, in the Eldrazi ramp decks. But in this deck, two of our ramp creatures actually can serve as win conditions themselves. This transforms into a 4-6, this into a 3-4 with prowess. That still gets us more. Both of them can still effectively give us more mana if we need to. So yes, it is not the case that you're going to just simply, you know, be able to win the game off of doing nothing but destroying their lands. But even the cards that enable you to destroy their lands can be themselves win conditions in the deck. And that's something that the mono red list does not have. When you get to the early game, these will just help you to get into Demolish, Structural Distortion, Crumble, Reclaiming Vines, Goggles. In the mid to late game, usually they're just the very late game, right? They will turn into actual threats themselves. So it makes top decking them not as bad as you might think, I would suppose. Now, beyond that though, we don't just simply ramp. We also have to control the board a little bit. And this is where two Roast come into play. Just very simply, low to the ground, removal, it lets us kill pretty much every creature in the format, other than like the flying ones, other than Abyssin and whatnot. But if it doesn't fly, this should kill everything, I guess, and it will it won't kill some of the ramp deck creatures, it won't kill a fair number of them, but hopefully we're destroying all of their lands before they get to that point anyway. And then we have four Radiant Flames. This is one of the main reasons why we run three colors, actually. There are three reasons why. One is Radiant Flames. We can now converge for three colors instead of two, making it better than Kozlek's Return, in a way. Next is Curious Homunculus, because it gives us another wing condition ramp creature in the deck. And then we have some sideboard cards that are blue. Now, this is uh, a little bit awkward. So. 4, 4, 3, 4, 1, 16 up here, 4, 4, 4, 2, 4. So we're talking 18 down here, that's 34. With 23 lands in the deck, we still have three more cards to go. And I dedicate these to win condition slots. But, what do you side, in, or not side in, what do you bring in as the deck's win condition, other than these guys, these little dorks? They're usually not enough, right? And I have found three ways to go about doing this. The first is, I'll say, the most obvious, Dragonlord Atarka. Very simply, it cleans up their board a little bit, it's evasive, it's powerful, she's good for a reason, she's played for a reason. Uh, that being said, she's kind of, she doesn't do anything exceptionally well, right? And what I mean by that is, well, for one thing, Curious Homunculus can't be used to cast her because she's not an instant or sorcery. She's just a regular old creature. Uh, we also can't abuse her type. Not anymore. At least not that I've seen. Uh, dragons aren't as good as they, as they used to be, I suppose. Whereas, may, what I mean by that is relative. Relatively speaking, dragons aren't what they used to be. Because, number two, we could bring in Eldrazi. Specifically, we could have three world breakers in the deck. Eldrazi have sort of been outshining dragons. Vampires have two, spirits have. And world breaker is kind of great in this deck, kind of insane, you may have noticed. Now, if we play world breaker, that changes a few things about the deck, right? Curious Homunculus still won't tap for colorless mana, but we may actually be taking out Curious Homunculus altogether and replacing it with Hedron Crawler. Because we're, if we're doing that, now we have a creature that will tap for mana for creatures, Hedron Crawler into Worldbreaker. Well, now we don't need three colors as much, and we can take out Radiant Flames. But we wouldn't fully be taking it out. We would be changing it with Kozilek's Return. So we change one ramp creature out for another, one mass removal spell for another. Because with Kozilek's Return and Worldbreaker, we can actually get the flashback mode on it and deal five damage all around the board. 
Now, it is the case that when we play a card like Radiant Flames or Kozlek's Return, we will be killing our ramp creatures, usually at least. That is true, certainly. In the case of these two, they can get out of that range themselves, but in the early and mid game, you may not be able to get them transformed. If you can make it long enough to be able to cast Radiant Flames in the first place and clean their field, the fact that you don't have ramp creatures anymore isn't as consequential because hopefully you've gotten to the point later enough in the game where you can cast these without native ramp creatures. Hopefully. That's the idea anyway. In any case, we sort of have to run them regardless just to be able to keep the Coco decks from overwhelming us, for instance. Low to the ground decks like humans and even spirits. You get the idea. So we can have three World Breakers, and then change out Homunculus for Hedron Crawler, Radiant Flames for Kozlek's Return, and then we would change the mana base too, in order to accommodate it being a two-color deck instead of a three-color deck. But now to the third way, and that is with the card Volcanic Vision. Now, I've run this in the Mono Red deck. You can use mana from Homunculus to cast Volcanic Vision, that's true. You can copy it with Pyromancer's Goggles, that's true. Visions on its own doesn't serve as enough of a win condition because it deals damage to the opponent's creatures, not the opponent themselves. And that means that on its own, it won't really win us the game. If it were just that, it is effectively a win condition because once we cast Volcanic Vision, the game should be over, especially if we're copying it with goggles. We've wiped their board, we're getting back another LD or Radiant Flames or Roast to keep them off creatures. At that point, you rely on these to actually win the game, to close the game out for you. And that's perfectly alright, I find. Uh, <laughs> so those are the, the three ways you can play in the deck. You can run Dragonlord Atarka, who is great, actually. She's really solid, she's evasive, she's big, um, and she wipes their field a little bit. You can run Worldbreaker, who benefits from the Eldrazi synergy with Kozilek's return, and can remove other creatures, but isn't as good against, you know, a full board, a swarm, say, from the green-white tokens decks. Uh, and you can run Volcanic Vision, which decimates whatever's on their board, uh, but isn't in and of itself as much of a win condition as we would like. Uh, it doesn't close the game out on its own, it slows it down so that you can win with these. Now, those being the cards in the main deck, Again, we have 23 lands to go. We start off with some obvious ones. We have four Cinder Glades, because <laughs> we're a Gruul deck in Standard, or I guess we still say a Targa deck in Standard, so of course we run those. Similarly, we run Game Trail, because we can. I love the synergy between these. And next we run, we have to have some blue sources, so we run Lumbering Falls in here, four of, we're not usually using it to turn into a creature, although, especially in the Volcanic Vision version of the deck, ooh, that alliteration, uh, we actually can. We can wipe their board and then start beating them with slower threats like Lumbering Falls, uh, Voracious, and Ulvenwald. can't remember. Ulvenwald Abomination, of course. Now it's obvious. It's obvious once you know the answer. So 12 so far, we make it 16 with 4 Evolving Wilds. Just gets us all of our colors. Now, we do have to have a reasonable enough likelihood of getting blue in order to play Curious Homunculus and our sideboard answers. So we have the 4 Lumbering Falls, 4 Evolving Wilds, we have 1 Island, so that effectively makes it 9 blue sources in the deck. I think that that's enough that we can now run it. It's not too much in the main board, it's just the Homunculus and the Radiant Flames, and even then, without the third color for Flames, we can still cast it. I think this is fine at 9. Now for the sideboard. Oh, by the way, I should also note, 2 Forest, 4 Mountains, rounding it out. Uh, we have, in the sideboard, 2 copies of Collective Defiance for creature kill that also kills players. If you're going on the plan where say they're siding in creature kill for whatever reason, you imagine that, you can turn into what I do with the mono red deck, which is you side in uh, direct damage and you copy it with Pyromancer's Goggles. You're still going to want to keep your creatures in, 
uh, or maybe not as many, but you're going to want to keep some of them in because they are real win conditions in the deck, but this gives you another outlet. If you start copying Collective Defiance, kill one of their creatures, deal them 4 damage, and then do it again, that can get kind of silly. That can get kind of backbreaking for them. And so, we have uh, just two of those in this list, at least as I'm running it right now. I'm going to skip ahead alphabetically and move on to Fiery Impulse for very low to the ground decks. This sort of speaks for itself, I suppose. Just two damage, make it three in the mid game to late game. We can get there fairly readily in this kind of deck. Our LD spells should fill up quickly. Roast, Radiant Flames, you get the idea. Uh, four of them because the worst kind of match for this deck is anything aggro, which is to say, usually turn 3 or 4 we're casting all of our LD spells, but up until that point, if the opponent already has the ground locked down, it doesn't matter how many of their lands we're destroying, it, it really doesn't ultimately. So <laughs> there we have it. Uh, we need something to fight low to the ground decks. That's another reason you'd bring in Defiance. Dispel. So, it is likely enough against the control decks, or just decks with blue, uh, that when we cast one of our LD spells, they can start countering them and sort of get out of the... Control decks need to counter or need to in some way invalidate our LD spells, or they can't win the game, right? Imagine an Esper Dragons deck or an Esper Control deck, or Orzhov Control even, never being able to get up to Planeswalker mana or Dragon mana or what whatnot. Uh, if they're going to try to counter them, Dispel is an easy way to get around that, and it also stops a fair number of good cards in the format. Uh, negate, along the same vein. More expensive, but also more versatile. And then, lastly, I have two more Roast. Oh, by the way, I should note, uh, four Dispels, three Negates, and two more Roast to round out the creature removal package, because aggro can just be that bad for us. If Roast were instant speed, that would be great. Since it's sorcery speed, the Coco decks can still get us through it. Uh, that's one reason why Fiery Impulse is as important as it is. If you're in need of more instant speed removal, say because of your meta having a lot of Coco in it, then consider replacing some of these with Galvanic Bombardment. Sorry, a little hiccup there. Just, it only will hit creatures, but two, four, six, eight. <laughs> And two will d it'll kill a fair amount, a fair number of cards in the Coco decks. Four should kill everything. I mean, that even kills up to Avison. Uh, yes, Selfless Spirit is a card, but w regardless of what our removal is, they can play that. And that's the deck as I have it right now. If you have any comments, any suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And I will finally get off my LD kick for the next uh, deck coming up. I have another standard brew for you. Until then, take care, Magic Community. Bye-bye.